Um, how's Georgie chat about that? Uh, yeah, he's, he's, it was positive news after the game. It looked uh, at the time a lot more serious than it turned out to be. It was a back spasm that sort of immobilised him a little bit at the time, which was a bit worrying for us all. But uh, he's responded well. He's 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 not trained with the group uh, yet, but he'll he'll be someone who we're hoping that he's he's uh, available for selection. So is that fifty fifty or? Yeah, I'd say a bit more than that. The plan is for, for, to have Georgie available for selection. That'll be um, seeing how he responds to training tomorrow. In the last 18 months, his improvement has been staggering. Do you know how much of that is to do with Euros, just to, just getting used to the country, getting used to the environment? What do you, what do you put it down to? Yeah, he's a good player. He's, he's a real top player. He's a top professional. He, he wants to learn. He, he wants to sort of... His game intelligence is really, really high. He's that of a Premier League player, um, and and with when you have that along with his his technical attributes, yeah, he's, he's someone who can can be exciting. I think the challenge for Georgie, uh, certainly from me, would be to be more determined to to have goals and assists. Now he's got the technical ability to 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 do that, and now it's just a mentality of being in the right place at the right time every time and. And if he continues to do that, I expect to see big, big numbers from Georgie this season. I mean, he is influencing pretty much every game he's playing in now. He, you know, when the ball at his feet, he's very good, but he's actually also then progressing and, and making things happen. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's always got a moment in him and a spark and, and a real moment of quality. And um, yeah, I don't want to take the shine away from what Edo's done and in, in the opposite side of, of the pitch as well. But, but yeah, Georgie's in a real good moment of confidence. Um, we, we're really happy that the, the injury um, isn't as serious as we first uh, feared. Um, and and he's, uh, he's someone I thoroughly enjoy coaching. What about Rocco Bata? We saw him and we've seen him since the beginning of the season. What do you make of him so far in his development? Yeah, Rocco's an exciting player. He's, uh, he's someone who's got real top technical attributes but he's direct he he's wants to hurt you in behind he's got good contact finishing off both feet and and he, he's learning the out of possession role and, and the dark arts of the championship um, he's, he's someone who I want to integrate more and more and get more experience and exposure and um, yeah that, that could happen this weekend What's the situation with Barr? How's he? How's he? Uh, yeah he's 50-50 for last weekend and didn't make it a, he's trained today um, and we'll see how he reacts to that and and again yeah he's not someone who I can say is definitely going to be available but we're on the the hopeful side of 50-50 yeah some of the others loser Obona yeah uh, loser and Obona come b back into the squad for this weekend um, and and they'll be they'll be good additions we, we've been light in those positions for the last few weeks so so really Strong additions, uh, experienced players, and, and happy to have them back. So that squad now is beginning to really take shape. With a few of those injuries now off, it's, it's going to be you know interesting goals to make. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Toughest team selection I've had up to date, and uh, and yeah, strength, more strength in depth. We saw a bit of Ebersele on Saturday. Um, what does he bring to the party? Um, well, clearly physical attributes. His speed and his directness and his strength uh, are, are real. Uh, assets and what we're looking for in those positions so um, whether it's from the start or whether it's coming on for half an hour I don't think anyone would like to to sort of face Festy when he's when he's been really direct now it's, it's our job as coaches to sort of implement the way we play our game plan our patterns and everything and and, and slowly but surely as he understands he'll be he'll become more and more um, important we spoke about it after the game about the starts is that fine balance is that Telling the players, but not making a massive deal of it. How, how do you go about that? Is that what is that something that you yeah, learn, try and learn? Yeah, it's been, it's been addressed without making it an absolute fear. Um, we'll change a couple of things with our preparation, subtle changes, um, and and they they should have the the desired effect. But what about Norwich? They've, they've lost a member of their coaching staff this week. Do you think that will affect them? Uh, slight, yeah, a little bit unsettled. Uh, more for the staff than, than the players, I'd assume. Um, they're, they're a team who likes to sort of get a lot of players around the ball, connect passes, make a lot of passes, take risks in build. Um, and, and yeah, a team that, that we have to respect. They've, they've got a good balance of experience. Kenny McLean, is, he was always one of my toughest opponents as a player. And 
player I respect a lot. Um, and and yeah, Duffy at the back, Hanley at the, around it, and got a lot of experience in their squad. Um, but maybe just going through a transitional period of, of style of play, and and um, and yeah, we we feel like we have a game plan to go there and and, and win the game. Having got off to this start, the last couple of games, you, the other teams have, have done quite well against you in certain phases. Do you think teams are working out your system and then trying to? Yeah, the better. I know that's how football works. No, I don't think we've come predictable at all. Um, we we have um, answers to teams who might try and second guess what we're doing to, to them, and and we we have answers and patterns and rotations to to counteract that. I think Sheffield United was just a flat performance from from us, um, and Coventry game of two halves. I, I think second half showed the, our credentials again, um, and but let's not. Disrespect Coventry, a good team. The uh, FA Cup semi finalists last year, playoff finalists year before, spent a lot of money. So, yeah, we've played a relegated team and a team who are, who are going to be there, thereabouts this season. And, um, yeah, I, f- I feel like we've we've pushed them both all the way. And and 10 points from five games is is still a, a good start. Do you love the tactical side of it when you're on the touchline and you're seeing how they're playing and then how you're going to counter that and do things like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I'd, I, you can never lose sight of who you are yourselves, but you have to take into account um, uh, what the opposition are doing, what you think they might do, and how they might respond. And I do enjoy that that part of the the role. Yeah. Thanks. Um, when Sierra's came, of course, it was there an injury, or was that just tactical Because there's a little like he was stretching. Oh, then listen, when we ask a player to go 1v1 against Ellis Sims, a lot of the game, it's a demanding game. And there was a little bit of exhaustion from Fran. thought he did excellently well. Uh, he's As far as lone strikers go in the league, there won't be a bigger test than Sims. Um, and, and yeah, he was more exhaustion than anything. Um, talking of strikers, you didn't start Jefferson last week. What was the thinking behind that? Was there the temptation to throw him straight in or are you going to be easy? Yeah, I'm, I'm a coach that values the game plan and, and you really have to understand and buy into that. So so it, it was I just felt it was too soon. Daniel is a fantastic player, he's got a high potential and um he, he was someone I just felt like I needed a, a bit more time with to, to integrate in and and get him un- understanding of what, what I want from our number nine. Um looking around the championship, there's a lot of coaches that aren't household names that people haven't heard of. Does that make it harder? Because you're trying to second guess someone who, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, I watched Hull the other night, I had no idea what they were doing, didn't know who he was. Yeah, I think it does, it, certainly in the first couple of games. I think now we've got enough footage and understanding at five games in of how the opposition are going to play and, and their style and their coach's style. Um, but certainly in the first, if we were facing Norwich first couple of games, it would have been a big challenge, as any team have probably faced Hull uh, fa- uh, came across as well. Um, obviously, the Sheffield United, we were going down early. What's the plan for the away games? How cavalier do you want to be? How front footed do you um, as much as we possibly can, uh, I like to gain that superior mindset, which we, which hasn't been easy going behind so early in games recently. So, but no, it's it's something that I've put a massive emphasis on the home form. But we we feel confident we have the game plan, and I don't think you can pigeonhole us. Right, we are this team. This is we have the only way we can score is by making five hundred passes a game, and no, we've. We've got pace, power. We we can be physical at set pieces. We have technical ability when we want to dominate games, and it, it's yeah, it's going to be hard to keep a lid on us because we've got various ways of, of winning games, and and that suits playing away as well as it does at home. So it'll be a very different Watford to the away Watford you had to put together last season, which was really just about picking up points. Uh, I'm hoping so, but I thought the away form was actually good well, last well, year. Yeah, I'm just talking about more the approach. Yeah. Um, mm, Difficult question to answer, really. I, th- I think the approach is is not the same for every game. I, I create a game plan for, for horses for courses, and and that will affect team selection. But yeah, we've we've got. I'm not going to say what it is, but there's a clear way of the players know how we're going to get a result on Saturday. Are you ever tempted to do what Mark Robbie did to you and throw a curveball to someone else? Uh, I wouldn't do it for curveball sick, but. Um, I wouldn't be afraid of changing system if I felt like it was absolutely the right thing to do for that game. We did it at Southampton away last year um, and 
yeah, it's it's not it's something that I would be open to doing. 